Hi everyone, this is Dan with Syntex, and today we're going to be going over our locators in Selenium Part 2. Again, please watch our previous video on locators Part 1. Um, we went over options number 1 through 6. We went over ID, class name, name, tag name, link text, and partial link text. We went in pretty decent detail and gave you some examples, so please go ahead and watch that if uh, um, that would go ahead and help you out with this further lesson here. Um, and as promised, we're going to go over CSS Selector and XPath today. Now, what is CSS Selector and XPath? Well, they're just two different types of locators. Now, where other locators, as we had talked about in the previous lesson, um, let's go back to our same example here of our text box. We saw that we had our ID and our class. These were their, you know, the attributes and it had a value, right? Well, CSS selectors and XPaths are not necessarily worrying about an actual attribute and something that was unique in that aspect, but unique to where it is located, right? So this is an HTML DOM, and those two locators are more so intertwined with the actual kind of place they are here within our DOM. Now, what we mean by that is there's two, when we first go over, there's two different kinds of X paths. There's relative and there is absolute. Now, absolute is from the top to the bottom. So let's say I wanted to work with this little text box here, this, um, this field that we were talking about. What it would do is it would start from the top here and shift down into every single one all the way down through all the tags and all the nodes until it found mine here now that is not ideal which is why we use relative xpaths and i'm going to be teaching you a relative xpath today as far as I'm concerned, you guys should not be using absolute. I just wanted to give you guys um, some knowledge that there are a different one out there, um, different X path. There's two different ones, as I said, relative and absolute. We should not be using absolute. Absolute is where it is its location from the top all the way down to the bottom. And why this is not widely used or shouldn't be used is because we have to give that path. So when we were giving our locators and we were typing in our driver.find and we gave its value, well, we have to give that value, that entire path. And if that path ever changed down the line, well, that means that what we had written down over here, our path to this element, will no longer be true and it won't work anymore, which is why we don't like to use absolute. But we're going to do relative. Now, relative is we can go ahead and see how we have ID and class. We can use any attribute in a particular element and just go from there. It'll find exactly where it is in the DOM without having to go from the top all the way to the bottom. It just zooms through and goes directly to where we need to go, not step by step by step by step by step. So that is relative X path. Now CSS selector is something that's very similar to XPath um, in the way it's written, but it is different. Now, we see here we have CSS styles. CSS is a part of how we build web applications, okay? Now, CSS is native to these browsers here, okay? It's, it's a part of how we build them, and we can use that as a way to select things as well. Now, CSS selectors are a little bit faster because I had just had mentioned that they are native to the browsers. They're, they're already a part of the browser. Um, it's in its makeup, right? So it's a little bit faster and easier to use. Now, I'm going to go over how do we write them, okay? Because remember, I said we have to give the path. Now, with an XPath, let's say I want to use this full name right here, this, this box. Well... Let's say I want to use the attribute of, mm, let's say ID. 
let's say I want to use this ID attribute, but I'm going to do it in an XPath form. We have to write it in a particular way, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So if I was going to do, um, let's say, we'll say name field. Actually, you know what? I'll just type it all out for you. It might be a little bit easier to, to see it all work together. So if I did driver dot find element, and again, we do by dot, and then we're going to find it by way of what? XPath. So now we have to write that in here. So what I'm going to do is write it just like this. We do two forward slashes and then we give the tag name. And we saw our tag name is input. So we do input. Then we have two square brackets. Okay, so you guys follow me so far? Let's go ahead and write this out over here too so we, we can see uh, no problem. All right, so we have two forward slashes. We have our, our tag. We have two square brackets. Then we have to have a at symbol inside here okay so what we do that for is we need to let it know what attribute are we going to use well as i said i want to use the id so okay great and i see here that id is username so i'm just going to go ahead and copy this all right so again my attribute so it's two forward slashes, the tag, the at symbol. I want to use my ID. Then I'm going to put the equal sign, quotations, and then I am going to put the value of my ID here. Now this is how we write an X path. Okay, so I have my forward slashes again. Now, two forward slashes means relative, okay? And if it was just, let's say, I had one slash and then maybe it was, you know, body, another slash, it was, you know, div, another slash, hello, this is absolute, right? We don't want that, right? So if it had one slash like this between every single item, that's an absolute X path. We don't want that, okay? But for relative, we use two forward slashes. We have our tag. We have the at symbol, and this is all within inside our two square brackets. And we have our attribute that we chosen, which was ID. And then we put that ID equals, and we have double quotations, and we put the value of that ID inside the double quotations. So let's go ahead and finish that off here. We're going to do at ID equals quotes. We're going to put the value of that in there. And then we are going to do, I'm sorry, single quotations works best here. And then we're going to do, again, like our other example, we're going to do the send keys and type in, yeah, we'll type in, yeah, we'll do hello again. Keep it same. Okay, so I should be going to my text box URL, like in our previous example, and my driver should find the element by XPath, and it should find that name field by, again, by the way of XPath. And I just show you how it was written. And again, XPath isn't so much worried about its class or its ID. I could have used type as text. I could use maybe placeholder as full name. And how that would be written is, again, we had at place holder, and then I think it was full name. 
was the value. So again, we just need to use any attribute that we see and its value. But I just chose ID um, just to kind of get you guys, you know, a similar feel. So you're not going anything too crazy because we did use by IDs in another reference, but now we're going to use it in way of XPath. But again, like I mentioned, we can use any attribute and its value. So let's go ahead and run and it should go ahead and find everything that we need it to do. All right. Let's go here. And it found it and it typed in hello. Okay, so that's what we wanted it to do. And we were, again, worried not about its one particular attribute, but its location here in the DOM by way of position. And that's how it found it. It found it by the ID. It found it exactly where we wanted it to go. And I could have done it again, like I said, placeholder as well. Now CSS selector, same thing. You know, it's, it's where its location is. And there's a few more differences between XPath and CSS selectors. Um, now, when we get into something called advanced XPath, which we'll talk about in a future lesson, uh, we can, you know, skip. We can maybe find this element um, and then maybe go up a couple or go down a couple. Um, we could do kind of go backwards and forwards here within the DOM for the location. But CSS selector can only go forwards here, down, down the DOM, not backwards up towards the DOM like XPaths can. Um, there's a few other kind of methods and, and other differences, but those are a little more advanced concepts, and we'll talk about those in a future lesson. But again, I'll just kind of show you what a CSS selector is and how it's written. Now, if I want to use the same text box here, and I wanted to kind of use the same ID and everything, it's written very, very similarly. Um, all we do for a CSS selector is, I'll keep this here so we can see this as an example. I'll go ahead and comment that out. But if I did driver dot find element, and then we do by dot CSS selector, okay? And again, CSS selector, uh, see these styles? These are all CSS styles. Um, we can do kind of cool stuff with that later. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a future lesson, but we're going to go select this by way of CSS selector by way of pretty much it by way of here in the DOM in its position. Okay. Just like we did with an XPath and how we write that is very simply pretty much the same way as an XPath, but we leave a few things out. So where XPath we had slashes, we don't do that. We just simply just put the tag name. We have our square bracket. And then where we would do the at symbol, the shift number two, we don't do that with CSS selectors. We simply just put the attribute we want to use and single quotations and its value. I'm going to paste that here. So we see that this is very, very similar to our XPath here. I'm going I'm to post it just kind of um, right above each other. Well, that didn't really work out for me. Hold on one second, guys. put that here for you all right there we go sorry guys a little technical difficulties my uh wasn't working with me for a second <laughs> but we go ahead and got it so you see here that is my xpath and that is my css selector it's very similar now again we can write CSS selectors, there, there's a few short hands and um, some, you know, little shortcuts and things that we can do. Uh, we're not going to worry about that. It's a little more advanced, but just show you just an easy, basic example of how we can use it. And that is the one of the easiest, basic ways of writing a CSS selector. So we're going to do the same example. I'm going to do send keys. And then I want to type in, we'll say, 
good good class we'll type that in we'll type in good class all right so it's going to go ahead and find it by its css selector and type in good class let's go ahead and run that and there we go good class all right guys so that's xpath and css selectors whereas the other elements are specific attributes we want to use whereas xpaths and css selectors are yes using those specific attributes to help locate what we want to use but it's reading from kind of the top to the bottom uh in where it's location and we can kind of cut through that with relative xpaths of getting right to where we want to go uh per its location here in the dom and we did the same thing with the css selector as well all right guys so that's it for xpath css selectors and you guys have a good one and happy coding all right goodbye